The death toll from Friday's terror attack in New Zealand has now risen to 50, as stories of heroism and humanity begin to emerge with the victims being identified and now laid to rest. Two people remain in critical condition in the hospital, but the death toll has already surpassed the entire number of homicides New Zealand sees in an entire year. Since the tragedy, New Zealand's Prime Minister has promised quick and decisive change, noting that the 28-year-old suspected gunman had five legal firearms. Speaking today after a weekly cabinet meeting, she told reporters that they had agreed in principle reforms to gun laws and would be announcing them within the next 10 days. Wow. In this country, the focus has been on President Trump's lukewarm condemnation of the attack. The White House released an official statement condemning the attack, and in the immediate after Aftermath, the president tweeted his warmest sympathies. He also said best wishes. But when asked if he believes white nationalism is a rising threat, this was his actual answer. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems, I guess. The president's wrong on that. Joining me now with the latest NBC News White House correspondent, Jeff Bennett, Jeff, walk us through sort of the general reaction to the president's statement that white nationalism is not a rising threat. That's just not correct. Right. And you're right about that, because, look, President Trump, even though he clearly condemned the New Zealand attacks from the Oval Office, he also downplayed this threat posed by the kinds of white nationalists who are suspected of being involved in the shootings. And his dismissal of the dangers posed by white supremacists, Steph, actually contradicts the warnings of his own administration. Both the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security in a May 2017 intelligence bulletin warned that white supremacist groups had already carried out more attacks than any other domestic extremist group over the past 16 years and would likely carry out more. And the bulletin's findings are actually backed up by independent data. You have the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, finding that 71% of the deaths linked to extremism in the U.S. between 2008 and 2017 were committed by far-right attackers. You have the Southern Poverty Law Center reporting that the number of, of hate groups operating across the country rose to a record high in 2018. So experts who study hate groups say that some of the president's rhetoric, some of it emboldens white nationalists. That that the way he's demagogued certain marginalized groups helps to fuel the anger, rage, and resentment on the far right. Now, Mick Mulvaney, the president's White House uh, acting chief of staff, was asked about that yesterday, and here's how he, he defended President Trump. The president is not a white supremacist. I'm not sure how many times we have to say that. And to simply, to simply ask the question every time something like this happens overseas, or even domestically, to say, oh my goodness, it must somehow be the president's fault, speaks to a, a politicization of everything that I think is undermining sort of the institutions that we, that we have in the country today. Why not make a speech and make it clear that there is no place in America for this kind of hatred? Well, I think you saw that yesterday in the tweet. I mean, the president, not sure what more you want the president to do. So this attack is raising new questions about the extent to which President Trump has a responsibility to moderate his language, given the rise in white supremacy movements all across the world, Steph. All right. So you see other people, the White House, like Mick Mulvaney, trying to take the reins uh, and take a hard stance. But remember, yesterday, while the president was on that Twitter storm, I think it was almost 30 tweets, he mentioned nothing about New Zealand, but he went on to defend television hosts who have pushed anti-Muslim rhetoric. Joining me now, contributing opinion writer for The New York Times and author of The Domestic Crusaders, Waj Ali. Waj, at this point, um, we really shouldn't be surprised by the president's rhetoric, should we? We shouldn't be surprised at all. This is the feature, not the bug. And wouldn't it be lovely for the rest of us if Donald Trump had half as much gusto and passion in attacking white supremacists, the number one domestic terror threat in America, according to the FBI, like he does against John McCain? the press, black people, immigrants, Muslims, Obama, mother. If he did that, maybe we'd be a safer country. And wouldn't it be lovely, Stephanie, if he defended the rest of Americans? You know, because he's the president of all Americans, by the way, uh, like he defended, you know, Judge Pirro, and like he defends MBS of Saudi Arabia and Kim Jong-un of North Korea, and also those very fine people in Charlottesville. And so this is the feature, not the bug. And one thing I'll say is, you know, Mick Mulvaney uh, yesterday said that he's not a white supremacist, but it's important to note he does promote white supremacist conspiracy theories. And it's too early to gaslight us. The midterm elections just happened in October, and President Trump doubled down 
on the George Soros conspiracy theory, which stems from the ideological infrastructure of white supremacists around the world, saying that rich billionaire Jews are bringing in a caravan of invaders that includes Mexicans, immigrants, Muslims, black people to weaken and subordinate white men. That is exactly the message that Donald Trump promoted, the George Soros conspiracy theory that comes from white supremacist circles that is used in Hungary and Poland against Jews, against Muslims, against immigrants. That's what Donald Trump promoted. And so the question is, why does a New Zealand terrorist who left behind a manifesto where he killed 50 people in that manifesto, why does he say President Trump is a renewed symbol of white identity and he shares a common purpose with me? Why does a terrorist share a common purpose with the president of the United States of America, Stephanie? That's well, the question I have. Mick Mulvaney tries to make the argument that what the president is is simply not politically correct. That's all it is. But I want to share uh, some sound from the president over the last year or so and what he has said. Listen up. We're on track for a million illegal aliens to rush our borders. People hate the word invasion, but that's what it is. We've got to get rid of drugs and gangs and people. It's an invasion. We have an invasion of drugs and criminals coming into our country that we stop, but it's very hard to stop. No nation can allow its borders to be overrun. And that's an invasion. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the fake media says. That's an invasion of our country. Let's remind our audience when he talks gangs, MS-13 was actually originated in the L.A. area. And if you're talking about drugs, they make their way in at legal ports of entry. What do you make of this? You know who else uses the word invasion? The New Zealand domestic terrorist. He used it several times in his manifesto. You know who else used the word invasion in October while Donald Trump was saying it? Uh, Robert Bowers, the man who walked into the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh and shot and killed 11 people. Why? Because he wanted to punish the invaders who are coming to this country. Specifically, he reposted uh, a post on Gab that said he wants to punish filthy evil Jews for bringing in filthy evil Muslims. So, why is it all connected and why is President Trump promoting these white supremacist conspiracy theories? Stephanie? Well, then let's go to decency and civility. Former, former Department of Homeland Security uh, Jay Johnson spoke out on the Sunday shows about the civic tone in this country. And I want to share what he said, because every day on this show, we are begging for decency and civility to make a feverish comeback. And here's what Jay said. I would have the president um, say to all Americans, political leaders, candidates for political positions, that part of our responsibility as leaders, those of us with the largest microphones, have a duty to the American public to raise the level of civility in our dialogue. And that's something that I think is fundamental to, to our civilian leadership in this country. And we've really got to rededicate ourselves to that. Your reaction? Listen, he's a decent person. And President Trump lacks decency. I, one thing I have to say, we keep waiting for him to be presidential. He's not. This is who he is. Take him literally. Take him seriously. People of color have been taking him seriously. And the last thing I'll say, President Trump is a racist. This is the feature, not the bug. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.